Hello. Hey, how are you, Jacqueline? Good, how are you, Tim? How was your week end? Excellent, very excellent. How was yours? You know what, it was, uh, Saturday was wonderful. Finally had a chance to get out and enjoy a little bit of time uh, with nicer weather with the family without uh, being, uh, while respecting social distancing. Yesterday was tough. It was kind of rainy and cold and, you know, I can't wait till the weather gets nicer so we're able to really enjoy it. And we yeah. put all this behind us as well, right? That's my biggest, uh, that's my biggest hope. So anyways, we'll see what, uh, what happens. I'm going to get started in about a minute or two. What did you do this weekend? Me? Yes. I uh, worked all weekend. Um, it was very productive. Uh, yesterday, I actually had a Zoom call with almost my whole family. So that was, there was there's seven of us, and we got six on the call. So that's a new uh, Zoom record. So that was pretty fun. It was chaotic and dramatic, but it was fun. That's great. That's great. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's really trying and difficult for a lot of our families that we haven't been able to, you know, be close to. Um, I think the group knows that I have my parents, uh, thankfully. I feel blessed to still have them in our, in our lives. And I also, Mary has both of them. But now they're older, right? They're, well, my father-in-law is in his 80s. So these are the kind of things that um, is harder on them, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And hard on the kids. I mean, not being able to be in school and around, around their friends too. It's really, really tough and it's really hard on us. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome everybody for being here today. Um, I hope uh, Jack and I were talking about the weekend. I hope everybody else had a wonderful weekend. If, um, just to be on the safe side, um, if you have phones that are ringing or things around you, maybe you can mute yourself until you want to ask a question. You can also um, uh, chat in the chat box, ask a question. Um, and I, I don't want this to be formal. I want it to be where we're interactive and able to share um, ideas or experiences that are going on within you know, your lives and your business as well. There are some things I want to cover um, that are very, very important. Um, number one, is obviously the market update. And uh, I'm going to share my screen if it's uh, okay with everybody. <clears throat> Let me just get to that sharing screen spot. You know, I'm pretty good at this, you know, but for some reason, sometimes I've gotten really good at this lately. Sound the fuck asleep. Pardon me? Not bleeding, so I guess she'll work. <laughs> Everybody see this? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, well, as I said, guys, if you if you want to mute yourself, just to make sure that uh, we don't hear the background uh, noises. I know that we're working from home and stuff like that, but. Uh, okay. Are we good? Okay. So I want to talk about the market update first and foremost. Um, you've possibly got this from Broker Bay already, but I want to talk about it from uh, an office perspective also. Um, we are right in line in seeing this type of uh, activity going on. As you can tell, there's been the big drop, but in the past, um, I would say the past 10 days, if not slightly longer, we've started to see an uptick in showings. A um, little drop you're seeing there is just basically a day in the big scheme of things. But more and more, I have been talking to a lot of our um, agents and we are tracking that there are a lot more showings and offers. As a matter of fact, 30% of all listings um, in our database uh, and in conversations that about 30% in conversations with you uh, are still receiving multiple offers. So there are multiple offers happening right now and the prices are not uh, increasing. What's interesting is that we really have not seen much more than a 5% uh, drop in some cases right now um, down. Look at this that, are, that are out there. So if you have anything you'd like to share as well, by all means, please do. 
Um, I'm just going to show you, continue to show you here all the uh, activity that is going on. Um, in this case, you can see here that uh, there's an upward trend as well. Now, this is back to April 23rd, which is last Thursday. And then finally, here are the showings this week versus last week. Again, you're watching it dipped around the Sunday, the weekend. The weekends are typically not as busy. Um, the Sundays, for sure, Sundays are not as busy as other days. That's not really a good snapshot. You know, it could be a really nice day and people are not really doing um, real estate. They might be spending it with their family, but we are seeing again a steady increase as the week goes on. So as I was saying before, 70% um, of all our showings right now are starting and ending within the Broker Bay platform. And what that means is that more and more agents are actually booking an appointment on Stratus. By booking an appointment on Stratus and not calling an office, it actually goes direct, the, the software does all the work. So all the appointment process starts and ends with the actual uh, software. The, the, the seller gets notified. The seller actually um, accepts the, the, the showing. In most cases right now, a lot of our, um, there are a lot of our agents who are um, in between that showing. So they're actually confirming appointments. They're, they want to ask certain questions. There are sellers who do not want people in their home. That will continue for, for um, I, I believe, quite some time. I do not believe that um, even at 1.30, uh, if the government announces a plan um, you know, to start, start to open up different businesses, I don't believe that people will not be um, being extra careful, and we should all be very careful. So as I was saying, 30% of all homes are receiving multiples and the prices are pre-COVID at this time. And um, the reason why I don't believe that we've seen a big price drop is because of the government subsidies right now. The government, uh, we, you know, I've gone through uh, a few hiccups in my career. Uh, the biggest one being the recession between 1989 to 1996. Um, even though the recession was really finished maybe a year, a year and a half earlier, um, the consumer confidence was not in full swing until about a year, year and a half later. It always trails that way. Um, in this case, though, um, there were no government subsidies like the ones we're seeing today, um, and everybody was spending for themselves. Because of these government subsidies, subsidies and because of wage subsidies, uh, the CERB as a whole, um, and people just understanding that this is just the pause to stay home against the virus that we can't see, um, we're actually seeing that um, sellers do, that do not have to sell are not selling. Now, in my time at uh, TREB and in speaking with a lot of um, city officials, there's an interesting, um, there's an interesting stat I want to show, uh, share with you. And that is uh, the city of Toronto and the province of Ontario and the government, the federal government of Canada have always wondered how many condos or properties for that matter are vacant owned by investors and used for airbnb uh, i sincerely in my heart believe that uh, we're finally going to start to to get a better picture um, some some people are saying over eight thousand some people are saying over ten thousand some people are saying over fifteen thousand condos um, and or property have been used as Airbnb. And if a lot of these are um, owned by investors who cannot um, hold these properties for long term, we are going to see these properties either hitting the long term rental pool or actually being offered for sale. Now, do, does that mean that we're going to have an influx in actual activity, uh, sorry, an actual supply that can create pricing coming down? Uh, again, I do not believe that will happen. I believe that it will be absorbed quite quickly um, because we're not going to be over 100,000 sales this year. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe with the immigration to Toronto that we've had uh, over, over many, many years that we should be hovering around 125, 130,000 sales on Stratus and MLS. Uh, we've, we have not seen that as a matter, you know, we've only seen a maximum number of about 114,000 sales in 2017. 
We saw 78,000 sales in 18, and we saw 87,000 sales last year. Uh, readjusting our numbers, we're probably going to be somewhere between that 78 and 85. Um, that's hoping that the market uh, does come back uh, uh, based on consumer confidence around health more so than anything. And we do experience uh, more normal conditions. Every model is showing that there's a very, very good chance that this market will spring uh, back very, very uh, quickly. And uh, if that happens, um, we are, we've had supply crunch for 20 years plus. This is the time where some of these condos will be absorbed. So I do believe that's going to happen. And uh, in the meantime, what uh, is extremely important is that we all plan the next phase of what we're probably going to be going through over the next month uh, and a bit. And that would be um, working with the uh, idea uh, that COVID is going to be around us for some time and that we'll continue to, to be safe and uh, make sure that our clients are taken care of and uh, provided with comfort and confidence in the, in the process and the way we work. So with that, I'd like to announce uh, something that uh, we're excited about. Um, it's part of the uh, REMAX uh, amazing entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, our friends at REMAX Real Estate, the REMAX brokers have been talking with each other for some time on how to um, assist and how to provide confidence to uh, our clients to make sure they feel and are safe as well as yourself and how you can, can manage everything. So uh, REMAX Real Estate Center, uh, that's in Cambridge, Waterloo, uh, Kitchener, uh, they were able to, to get uh, a supplier to, pro to create kits. And these kits, what they have is a set of, for three people, so agent and uh, uh, two, two buyers, for example. Um, this kit would have uh, th uh, three pairs of foot coverings, three pairs of gloves, and three masks. So these masks uh, will allow you to, uh, this, each box has uh, five showing kits inside it. Uh, these these uh, showing kits will be ready sometime this week. I am planning on leaving the house and driving to pick them up and they will be brought to the office for any of you that are interested. There is a cost. There is absolutely no profit made by uh, Remax Real Estate Center or Remax Ultimate. The cost is $15 per kit or $75 per box. So we are going to request that we sell them by the box because this is something that you will need for some time. You can see here in the picture that it shows, uh, there's images of the gloves, the foot covers, uh, the Lysol wipes and the masks. So this, uh, there's, an enough, there's enough kits in each box, as I said before, that will cover five showings with three people. Any questions about that? Okay. Oh, sorry, did you, sorry, Tim, it's Paulette. How do you order them? So um, I'm gonna go pick them up, Paulette, and we don't have a form or anything like that to order. I bought 50 boxes. I, I, I talked to the supplier. Uh, the supplier was able to, uh, we bought 750 kits, okay? 750 kits, but they're in 50 boxes. So our preference would be to sell them by the box, um, but um, we're gonna have them at the office and then we're probably going to disperse, uh, say, 10 or 15 at St. Clair, 10 or 15 at Dundas, and then probably uh, 10 or 15 or 20 at, at Bayview, just because of the size of the offices. And then you can, you can approach um, uh, Diana uh, at, uh, or the reception, like Liliana at St. Clair or Marissa at uh, Dundas, and you can actually um, uh, have one taken. And then we don't, we're not asking for money up front. We can add it to your bill if you're interested. Okay, great. That's what I wanted to know, how we, how we get them from you kind of thing. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, and then uh, I didn't know how many to actually order. And, and it's, these are, these things are very hard to get supply of, right? Uh, I actually paid $70 for uh, almost $70 for five masks, uh, let alone um, buying enough information. I mean, enough of this uh, supply. Um, there, so there's 750 kits that we bought. Um, Hopefully you guys find them a value. 
These are great tools to use with your buyer clients, showing them how you're managing, you know, uh, the showing. And it's probably even a great tool to show your listing, uh, your listings of how you're operating. Now, you're not going to give this to a, to a cooperating agent, but you will, you will share this with the people that you need to show uh, a house to that you have listed. Um, again, please, with all showings and all of your listings, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do and use technology that's at our disposal to pre-qualify and um, slow down the in-person uh, showings. Uh, just because we're gonna have nicer weather, uh, I, I believe we're gonna have 18 degrees on Saturday and Sunday for the population of Toronto that's been going stir crazy at home. Um, you could just imagine what that weather is going to do to a lot of people. They're gonna go out, they're gonna start walking around. It's gonna unfortunately probably be even more difficult to social distance. So, um, again, thinking this would be something of value. Sorry, Tim, can I just ask, when are they going to be available? I'm hoping to have them available by Wednesday. Okay, perfect. I'll have an update. I'll have an update today or tomorrow. They're actually, for, you, for those, for those um, stickers and the box, the way you see it, uh, that's how fast we're working. They're all ready to go. It's just a matter of... Um, uh, the, the, the young man who, who's doing all this uh, is just the labor power, right? How many can they prepare and how fast can they prepare them? Right, okay. I just have a buyer visit on Wednesday night, so I'm just like, should I pick stuff up or should I wait and hope this comes in? So, uh, you know what? Not. Paulette, if you don't mind, I'm going to write down uh, Paulette. Sorry, it's Mallory. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Mallory. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see. Uh, you know what? You actually sound like Paulette. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, I'm going to definitely make sure that, um, that I get this for you. Okay. okay. Thank you. But this is Paulette. So I'd like to also order, um, a kit, Tim. So please go ahead. Yeah. So no problem guys, if you don't mind to make it easier, um, just email me. Okay. Um, okay. everybody email me, you know, I'll have a running list and I will, the people who email me today. I will update you the moment that I know they're ready. So Matterport has now launched, as I've already discussed this. Um, it's fully interactive, just the way Zoom is. Uh, there's a lot more virtual showings happening and virtual open houses happening uh, that I've witnessed over the weekend. Uh, make sure you take advantage of it. Take the time now to learn this technology. Um, it's extremely important to learn it. Uh, be a student of your business. Um, at the same time, I've already shared this with you before, and I'll share it with you again. Um, that when you know, if, if for those of you who haven't heard me say this, I'm going to repeat it in full. And I'm sorry for repeating myself. Um, we've all been on holidays. We've all experienced a beautiful uh, sunset or some beautiful scene, and we've all taking out our phones and taking a picture of that, of that beautiful, you know, um, image to capture. Um, um we're, t what? Sorry? Yeah, no, I was literally just going to talk to you about that. Did you get an email right now? Who, me? Oh, somebody's so, talking to somebody uh, else. Just announced literally right now so that uh, he has a supplier. So essentially, um, uh, he found the supplier. Hey, Rebecca? Kids. Rebecca? Um, so there's boxes. He ordered, I think, like 7,500 kits. Or Rebecca, can you can mute it. from your end, eh? Masks. Oh, can I? Yes. Yeah, you can mute everyone from your end. I was just going right. to say. You know what, guys? You can get a But I can't see right the part I can't window. see the actual... Um, and he's going to bring them here around maybe on Wednesday. One second here. Um, so the way that it, yeah, he just said it's going to work is Whoa. that uh, you Whoa. would have Sorry, desk, okay. and then if someone wants to have them they can like take them from you and you make a note and it'll go on the monthly <laughs> statement but i assume you'd have to one second about who took what rebecca yeah, she's like we're super rebecca? on it right like hold on there's people in the office there i just sent her a text <laughs> hopefully okay, that works. thank you sorry about that i can't get my train of thought going so we were, I actually lost my turn of thought. No, sorry. So we've all been on vacation. We've all taken uh, pictures of a beautiful sunset 
and um, we've, we've had a smile from ear to ear. And then we've come back to Toronto and we've showed our family and friends this beautiful sunset. And I'm pretty sure that nobody felt the same way as you felt looking at that video. So what I'm trying to say is that even though this, this Matterport virtual tour, Zoom, uh, all this technology is amazing, nothing is going to eliminate the need for somebody to feel, uh, to walk through a home. Walking through a home provides that feeling of it being a happy home, a well cared for home. So what we need to do is accept that. And primarily it's the emotions that our clients are gonna be going through for quite some time and having people walk through their houses and, and help them, helping them with that. So if you have any questions about the showing protocols or any way that um, we can help, I am more than happy to even speak to any of your clients um, if that will help as well. So, Tim, can I ask you a question about that uh, launch? Uh, so Matterport and Broker Bay have integrated together, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so Matterport and Broker, so no, so Broker Bay has, a, has an API that allows Matterport to work within their platform, okay? They haven't, they're not one company. They're, it's, so you, you realize that any, any um, virtual tour company can use Matterport if they buy that camera, right? Yes, yeah. So, so Matterport now works in Broker Bay. Very, very soon, iGuide will also work. Okay, so they're continuously trying to expand um, the virtual and every tool possible through Broker Bay. And when you mean it, it's going to work with um, Broker Bay, like, is that just for the, um, us to kind of come together and do this uh, virtual open house and showing together? Is that, is that what you mean? Or what, what's the benefit? Yes, the way we're doing it right now. The way we're doing it right now. Okay, that's what it means. So okay. and you can post that on, on your Stratus uh, listing link as well. So you're going to have that exact uh, ability to do a virtual open house by adding it to creating an open house. We talked about that last week where you add to, to um, you go to my, you go to Stratus, you log in, you add an open house, but you're adding uh, a virtual open house with Matterport. Okay. 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 Now, the last thing I wanted to, well, the last thing, well, uh, a very important thing I want to discuss with you uh, is, um, is, sorry, I'm going to go back here for a second. And there's a reason why I'm going back here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something going on with, with, the, with virtual everything right now. And that is fraud. Okay. On the weekend, I received a phone call from SafeBridge in our office. Um, that shared with me an attempted fraud on a property that they were going to finance and, um, and, and have the poor seller lose out on their property. So it was a vacant condo. Uh, the, the, somebody approached them to rent it out, provided first and last month's rent, and then proceeded with fake IDs to hire an agent to sell the property. Do you guys catch that? Repeat that, please. Yes. So you, let, let's, let's role play this. You have a property for lease. The people, the, the frosters know that there's no mortgage on the property. They've done their, their background checks. They've created fake IDs with the image of the buyer and the seller's images on the fake IDs. They've leased out the property for first and last month's rent and then proceeded to call another agent with the fake IDs using Zoom to list the property for sale in an attempt to sell it quickly with a quick closing. You guys capture that? Yep. So because we are using this technology, we have to be vigilant in the way that we fin track and the way we actually interact with the consumers. We gotta be careful of fraud because when you're actually putting a property for sale, you're, you're using, you're using you know, you're going over there in person. In this case, they're trying to use this technology with an effort of, of fooling people. 
So be very careful who you're speaking to. And if something seems uh, too easy, it, typically there's a reason why it's too easy. You want to make sure that you're, you're protecting uh, everybody involved. And this is something I want to share with the group. Uh, Remax has come up with a flex plan and the, the flex plan does not apply to everyone. Uh, some of our agents, just full disclosure, uh, they may have a split of some kind. It could be 70-30 or 80-20. Or and in some cases, as an office, a very small percentage, but there are, there is, I would say, when I say small percentage, probably about 15% of our, of our office could be on a split of some kind. And in that split, uh, based on uh, how people function, um, we package even some of the Remax fees together to make it easy for some people. The majority of our office are on a straight 95.5. What Remax has done is they're offering now a flex plan. The flex plan is $159 a month, and then they collect the balance of what you've already would have paid through a split, and that split is 5%. So there is a new offering. Um, so there's no, it doesn't cost you anything extra. This actually just helps uh, some, of the, some of our agents who are paying you know, $283 a month for a Remax, now they're gonna be paying 159. If you are interested, please reach out to me uh, directly and we can talk about it. We are going to call all of our agents that, um, uh, that pay on a monthly basis to see if they want to take advantage of it. Any questions? Okay, great. So with that, I'm going to close it and I'm gonna do a stop screen share so we can be right back to speaking together. Is there anything that um, anybody would like to ask me specifically? Oh, Sandra, I have a question from you. Um, that says how much are the kits? The kits are seventy-five dollars each. Uh, sorry, not. Let me rephrase that. I, my mistake. The box that has five kits inside it are seventy-five dollars. So an entire box is seventy-five dollars. And I should have them by Wednesday. Does anybody want to share anything with me? Any concerns? Any questions? Oh, you guys are making it easy for me today. What's going on? Somebody speaking? Hi, Tim. Yeah. Can I have a chat with you? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just, I, I want to hear your opinion. Um, there is, there is, there's reasons why I watch the news and there's reasons why I don't watch the news. Okay. And when you hear, uh, there was an article that I read yesterday that was quite depressing. And I, I typically haven't been overly depressed during this whole crisis, but it was talking about all this stuff, how real, this is going to be the next great depression. And I'm not saying this brings up to create depression right now or depressing topic, but I know that was that person's opinion, but there's a lot of economics talk in there. And there was a lot of, um, point of views that made sense when, or it was quite convincing. And I'm not asking for a crystal ball here, but I wouldn't mind hearing our leader's thoughts, which is you. So do you ever watch baseball? Yes, I do. Do you know what a batting average is? Yes. Okay. Do you know that if you bat one, if you hit a ball once for every 10 times, you get minimum wage. If you bat two for every 10 times, you got a job in Major League Baseball. And, and, you're, and you're probably paid somewhat handsomely too. If you hit a ball three times, so batting 300 in essence, for every 10 times, you're paid $25 million a year. Okay, so there's three models out there right now. And the models are a market like like this, like a V shape. There's a market like this, which is like a U shape. And there's a market like this, which shows a long recovery. 
So these models are basically bending your ear and they're captivating one third of the population each. So nobody has a crystal ball and is able to read this thing, right? What I am gonna add though is this. And I was talking this morning with one of our agents, we're talking for about an hour about this, right? And this agent has seen a lot in his, in, in his lifetime, right? Like he's seen a lot of ups and downs. And the difference between the Great Depression and the recession that we went through in the early 90s, and even the one that we went through in 08, 09, is that these are financial crises, right? This is where uh, people overextended, this is where manufacturing slowed down, this is when a lot of different financial crises happened, right? And nobody, for the most part, they saved the banks, but they, they let them borrow money to save the banks, right? The government stepped in, the, by, by lending, lending them money. They lent money to GM. They lent money to Ford and Chrysler, for example, during those financial times to keep the economy going. But in the most part, those things never happened to the extent of today. The amount of money that's been printed and provided to, to, um, uh, to everybody, whether it's a wage subsidy, whether it's a $2,000 CERB, whether it's helping landlords and tenants pay their rent, all of these things are happening right now, which is in turn has created consumer confidence that this is a short term um, situation and not a long term one. Prices have possibly adjusted by 5%. They have not adjusted by 20% or 25%. And the fact that we're seeing showings coming back online and consumer interest coming back online, like this past week, we as an office were involved in home sales over two and a half million dollars. There are buyers out there right now looking at homes and making offers on two and a half million dollar properties. All the evidence is showing that the market is going to start to come back. And I do not believe that we're going into a recession. And I do not believe that we're going into a depression either. And I mean that with every ounce of my being in my body. No, no, no uh, positive bull, uh, smoke bowling here <laughs> at all. Uh, my advice to you is watch what you put into your head. Hmm. Watch what you listen to. I'm serious. If you go back to the slides that I showed you earlier in your broker bait on uh, the email for the past week, uh, two weeks, we've been seeing nothing but increased uh, showing activity. So people are out there. Oh, and by the way, everybody who had to buy and everybody who had to sell, that was six weeks ago, five weeks ago, four weeks ago. As we're going further and further, these are not people who have to buy and have to sell. To sell. These are people who want to buy and want to sell as well. We have listings in our office right now with our agents of clients who do not have to sell and do not have to buy. And uh, from Jen on the chat, Ford is currently announcing the unveiling of the framework to reopening the economy, and that's positive news. So what I recommend you do is not wait and be at a standstill. So when the market does come back, you're flat-footed. You're, like my recommendation to everybody would be to start um, uh, planning forward. By the way, just so everybody knows, I have reserved I have reserved December the third for our Christmas party. And if you don't believe me, call Parkland Manor. I called them. I said, "Hi, Chris. How are you? How is your family? How are things coming along? How many weddings have been canceled? He goes, "Too many to count. How many baptisms? How many this? How many that?" He says, a lot of them, we're trying to fit them into later with new dates, hoping that it's available for them, right? And uh, I, said, he said, I said, I'm not just calling to see how you're doing. I'm calling to make sure that the first, Thursday of, the first Thursday of December is still available. And he says, buddy, the first Thursday of December is always available to you. We write it down before you even ask. And I'm like, I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to having a huge antipasto table, a sit-down dinner, and music. We're all we're gonna get through this together. It's a lesson learned. Summer party might be tough. Elizabeth, 
a summer party might be tough to have. Um, I would love to have a summer party. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying that may be, it may be tough to have. But uh, uh, there's, there's nothing's impossible. We have to stay positive on it. Did I answer your question? You, yeah, you. Yeah. Those smiling faces, anybody else? I don't wanna pick on anybody. Anybody wanna make a comment? Could anybody share with, with the group? We got uh, over 30 people on the call. Can somebody share with the group some experiences in the past week with buyers and sellers? It'd be very helpful. Some positive news and some in between news, it doesn't really matter. Nobody. Wow. I'm going through everybody here. It's Gina. So Hi, I don't know exactly if it's positive news, but I had I have a listing in Caledon, and uh, I think in a pandemic, um, I did get them an offer, and I thought it was a pretty good offer, um, considering um, that the property is really. I mean, it's right on the brink of being worth where I could have got that offer to. The unfortunate thing is I have absolutely, I don't know what's happened, but absolutely unrealistic sellers that did not take that offer. But I will tell you, like it, the, the slant that I put on it, that in a pandemic, in Caledon, thank you very much, if I can bring an offer to the table that is realistic. And I've got a agent who's like, and he was a, like, he was a solid agent. He's like one of our ultimate agents kind of thing. And like, he should work with us. But he was one of those kind that, you know, this agent wants to make it happen. And he's like, he's, he's, he's good to work with. Like, but it was my sellers. It's them. And uh, very unusual. And I think, I do think that there's always something else going on. It's not about the money. We were so close. It, it, I don't know what it's about, it, but it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that, you know, 416 always seems to move a little bit faster than 905. Um, and so 905 is a little bit harder. There's more listings in 905 than there is in 416, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I didn't think of it as a fail. I thought of it as like, you know what, I, I worked hard. I got that offer. They didn't take it too bad for them. Um, they have unrealistic expectations who knew I didn't, re I didn't realize it was, it was, it was new to me, but so I felt that was kind of good news. And the other thing I wanted to make just a note of is, um, Andre, like you, I, I, I pick and choose the, the, um, the news that I listen to, but you know, even in this day and age, advertisers are the ones who are keeping the television stations and the radio stations going and the more viewers and the more listeners that those stations are getting the better the advertisers like it and i don't know if you guys have noticed but when italy was just going crazy with high numbers they were talking about italy every day and italy's been going down i don't know about you guys i'm not hearing about italy I'm not hearing about those down numbers. I'm not hearing about, oh, how everybody's serenading on the balconies anymore. Like I'm not hearing because there's good stuff happening now, but we don't hear that stuff. Only horror movies sell, you know, and science fiction. Those two sell the most, but those yeah, romantic and, love stories, they don't even at the box office get as much on the weekends. You know, they don't get as, their ratings aren't even as, happy, as, as big as Cinemaplex. So we have to put it in the proper perspective, I think. So that's, so that's my little tidbits for the meeting. So, I mean, again, I, I agree with you. And um, again, last week we discussed something. We said shock, fear, and now antsiness. And I'm gonna share another emotion that, I'm feel, that I've been feeling this past five days, six days actually. Shock, I can't believe this has happened to the world. Fear, what does it mean to me, my family, my financial well-being and everything else? And I said, antsiness, the, <laughs> graphs, the graphs are showing the antsiness. People are starting to see property. There is more supply hitting the market. There is more confidence, but there is another emotion that I, let up, that I left out that I want to share with the group. And that is, um, uh, what do you call it when you take medicine? Uh, personal wellness, right? That's where I'm going, recovery. That's the word I'm looking for. Now we need to go through the recovery emotion. 
because with the recovery emotion, it comes about of, you know, how we're feeling and how we're going to get over these feelings and work with these feelings. Um, again, I got uh, a family at home. Uh, they want to kill me. Um, I'm, at times I want to kill them. Uh, I'm going to whisper that so they don't hear me, right? And uh, it's, it's not easy. You know, we're in a car together. We go for drives. And I have every emotion in my home. I have my eldest daughter who's dealing with graduation and moving forward, but uh, there's a confidence there. I've got my middle daughter who will not go out. She won't go out. She hates going out. I got my youngest daughter who is having her own emotions and I have Mary and myself managing both, right? So now we're on the recovery side of things and we, get, we have to accept that this is going to be here. They're talking about a second wave, for example. It may or may not happen. But one thing is guaranteed is that we needed to go through these six weeks to learn about what this virus is and how it's going to affect us and how it affects more people. The great thing is there's way more, way more uh, uh, fact, evidence, proof-based decision-making right now. You know, now we know how it affected more people in the world and who it's affecting. So going forward, let's just pretend we have to wear masks for the time being um, or, or we have to stay home if we're not feeling well. It's going to be hard for our office. I'm going to respect what the government asks of us. We're still going to remain at one receptionist per office for some time, but now, come. I, I haven't heard what Ford's saying today, but I'm going to hear it. I want to see how it applies to real estate. We are one of the, fr the one of the few offices, ladies and gentlemen, that has had a receptionist at the office every single day. Ninety-five, if not ninety-nine percent of all offices are completely shut down. So we've been working through this, and. You know, hopefully by May 15th or May 20th or, or May 11th, I'm not sure. Like, I'm just giving you some of the dates that I have in my mind. We'll have more people in the office and we'll have the ability to walk and have people come and go responsibly, obviously, in the office. So it's, it's, um, it's just we got to listen and learn from it and, and um, manage it accordingly going forward. Tim, can I, uh, can I uh, ask for uh, maybe your opinion and as well as Gina's because it was coming from Gina's example of the listing in Caledon. Uh, I, I, I have about four sellers who are looking to sell and they're on the on hold right now. But I think three of them, if not maybe all of them, are having a bit of unrealistic expectations. And during a crisis or a pandemic that we're in, it's a little different from my perspective that you just don't take on any business right now because with every listing, it does cost you money. It costs you time and money to list them and to advertise them, market them. So when you know that something is really unrealistic, how do you approach that? Like Gina, if you knew that they're, they're, your Caledon sellers were uh, unrealistic expectations, what made you decide to say, you know what, I'll still do it for you just to prove, just to show you that Maybe it's under, or maybe let's, let's win the lottery and maybe that one buyer will come around where 85% of the other buyers have, put, have been put on hold. So what do you do? Um, that's a great question. And um, so I did not realize that they were unrealistic. And what's happened with these, they've worked with me before. So, the, and I, I have sold, I sold a house for them in Brampton and also their, her sister-in-law's house in Brampton and got like, a lot, a lot of money. And, um, and so originally, this is before COVID, everything, we got caught right in the crossfire of COVID. Like, right, like that morning, like the day that we're getting staged at 7.30 in the morning, I was on the phone with my stager and with my clients. Are we moving forward? Are we not moving forward? Okay. My stager got me an extension because I, I, none of us knew when it was announced. I think, I, I don't know, I can't speak for anybody else, but I certainly thought this would be two weeks, maybe three weeks. Because we didn't understand the, or I didn't understand the impact of it. So I thought, okay, if I get that little bit of an extension, I can work with this. And so I, I went as planned and I saw within four days, 
no, it's not happening. So I took it off the market and I put it on at a, at a more like at, at a at a more conventional kind of price point. Um, but I also even at, had an, a, a conversation with them, and this is how I'm approaching it. Everybody will have their own way of doing it. That I believe that whether we're setting somebody up for multiples or not, we we've, we've got. There, I look at it and I say, you know what? We've got the comparables, and these are the facts that we have to deal with: the black and white facts, the numbers. How factual that is in the present market is hard to say. You know, uh, supply and demand. Is it four one six nine zero five area code? Like, what month is it? When is like all that kind of stuff? There, there's so much to take into it. So, you know, hypothetically speaking, if I'm doing a listing in the spring and I've got my comps in September, it's like, here are my comparables. And then we've got this percentage that we figure that is going to go up somewhat in that spring. And that would be the number I work with and anything else would be a bonus. But then there's this dream price that people have. Would they believe that they should be getting? And I actually just had this conversation. I had a listing appointment just the other day as physically distant, interesting way to do it. Um, and I said to them, you know, we've got comparables and then we've got that price that it's a little bit more than the comparables, that percentage. And then we have that dream price. And I don't foresee right now that you're going to get that dream price. And it's also going to depend on when we decide to really specifically list. So I would not have taken them because to me, like when I'm listing something, that's money I'm putting out and that's after tax money that I'm putting out and I will give them pushback and I will walk, I would walk away. I'd be like, you know, but if I, if I had felt that maybe I could reach that number or close enough, um, my problem is it is a problem and not a problem. My clients happen to be mortgage free and they have been purchased. So, and they're in a dream world, which I had no idea, but you know, they're, they're, it could have been more money that I lost. I didn't usually, I get a real, I, I have a sense of this, but there's more going on with this. I only use this as an example because I still felt even in a pandemic, I, I still succeeded. I got an offer that I could work with, with an agent that was ready to make that deal happen. But what they wanted was unrealistic. And we were so close that when you're that close and somebody doesn't make a move, there's something going on. And I, I just want to make one mention too, if I can yes. take on the whole platform here, but no, no, you know, no. The, the, I, I do, I've, I've always been an agent. I'll, I may, I may dig my heels on some things and technology with Tim just to bug him. But generally speaking, you know, I move along, I get the gadgets, I do what has to be done. That's why I've, I've stayed in this business as long as I have. So I am, and really, What's happening right now, what's being presented to us is not new. It just has a new label on it, okay? Whether it's called Matterport or a virtual, like it's just a different way of doing business, but it's really not that new. It doesn't take that much difference. So the problem is we will be working more virtually. We will be working more with Zoom. No matter how much you, I mean, those of you who know me may get a feel of me, but if you don't know me, you don't get that same gut feel as you do when you're face to face. And so something is something, there's a, there's a puzzle, piece of the puzzle that's missing because I was so close to their price and they're still, they're digging their heels. So something has happened that I don't know about because I'm communicating with them so much differently. It's more emails, more text, more. So you don't, you're not able to read between the lines and figure it out. And I think that I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at that, but we'll, we're all going to have to hone our skills. And I think I know, the, I do think I know the, the, the reason. I do think I know what the problem is. So when I know what the problem is, I know if there's a solution or if I have, if I have means to a solution. In this case, I do not have means to a solution, but at least I know what that problem is. But you know, you got to you got to delve deeper somehow, some way to figure them out. So I think that's a skill that we're all going to have to hone. So, so if, if if you don't mind, Gina, I want to thank you, and, and I'm nominating you to do the next call if you don't mind. And now with Gina, is that possible? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're. This is amazing information. I'm just I'm just being funny with you, right? This is just this is amazing information. And I just want to highlight some of the stuff that you said, 
okay? Number one, um, what you discussed was um, 416 being different than 905. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that 416, it, like in my entire um, uh, recollection in history, it all starts in 416 both times. It, the slowdown starts in 416 to 905, and the recovery starts from 416 to 905. And what I'm trying to share with you here is because my colleagues at Remax, that the broker owners, like we, we've had, we have the same type of meetings now twice a week to, to find out you know, what they're experiencing in different markets. And I called one of my, my, my colleagues, my close friends, and I said, uh, I'll call him Mike, right? Mike, how's the market? He goes, oh my God, we're going on all cylinders. I said, do me a favor, get ahead of the curve. This is what's going on in Toronto. You got four days. He goes, what are you talking about? It's going to be gone in two weeks, this thing, right? Not even four days later, he calls me and said, well, what do you have, a crystal ball, right? And I said, no, it's like a, a calm pond. And on a calm pond, you drop a pebble in the middle of it, and it starts to ripple, and it starts to go out this way. Now, with Toronto being like the center, like people who can't afford Toronto, where do they go? They go outside, right? And they drive, they're driving further and further and further away. So now what's got happened is the reverse is going on. Now they're really slow in a lot of outlying areas. But I'm seeing, a, I've seen a, uh, at least a 10% increase in showings week over week. I'm seeing multiple offers on 30% of our listings. Ladies and gentlemen, in East York, it's all over Facebook. A house had 22 offers on it last week. 22 offers on a house. Did it sell for more? Like that, that, that dream price? No, it did not. But you know what it did sell for? It sold for the value before COVID. Yeah. And that's good enough in my eyes. In my heart, that is fantastic that it did that. So 22 offers mean that there's 21 other people looking for a property. And out of those 21 others, let's pretend that five of them are good deal trollers. They don't even qualify. They didn't even, made a, didn't even make a good offer. So now you're down to what? 16, 15 actual qualified, serious buyers who are saying, oh shit, I missed it. Now things are going to start getting better. So if we have 30% of all homes get multiples in Toronto, you see what's going to happen, right? Within, within a month, if not six weeks, it's going to start going to the outskirts. So your buyers, your sellers who are, you know, Gina, respectfully, I'm going to bet you lunch that they are going to get their dream price. Not right now, but they are going to get that price. If they're willing to wait a month or six weeks, they're going to get that price. The difference is they have to wait that month right now. And uh, it, it's very important. By the way, to interject, I'm taking score of the March and April babies that we didn't have a birthday lunch with. So either we're going to have a tremendous big birthday lunch later. I haven't forgotten you. Do not think that we're not going to do a birthday lunch. If I have to, I'll get you birthday gift cards, OK? But, but it's not the same. We're going we're gonna to try to hold off and do a special, you know, birthday lunch. You know, the, we'll see how that goes. The other thing you said, Gina, and I don't mind, you know, with everybody else, is this. Highly communicating. Candid, factual, in-your-face communicating. You can't sugarcoat it right now. You have to be real. Like, you always have to be real. But right now, more than ever, you have to be willing to walk away. And in most cases, you're not losing your business. You're just delaying it for later. Like that's all that's going on. Like these people, like in Andre's case, or many of our agents' case, the business is still there. There's that recovery feeling that they have to get over and it's gonna take some time, but it's, it's going to come. So I want to share those, those couple of things right there. I, I really, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not trying to say, list everything for sale, uh, go out there, act responsibly, screw the order. I'm not saying any of that. That's not who I am. I would never, ever give that advice. All I am adding is now's the time to be the light to your clients, right? Now's the time to be uh, open and to, and to provide that advice. 
And um, Gina, the last thing is your comment about being face to face. That's why we as an industry will never disappear. Okay. That, that is because I told you if I'm in Greece and I'm sitting on a rock and I'm smiling and I take a picture and I'm smiling and I come back and I show it to you, you don't get the same feeling because you weren't there. I can never pull that out and give it to you. The same thing when you are face to face interacting with another human being, you see the little quirk, you know, you see the little twitch, you see where their you can feel their pulse increase. You can, you can see the redness in their face or the sweat beating down their forehead. You can't see that in a Zoom call. You cannot see that in this environment right now. So we need to get back to that, but we need to, uh, since we're on Zoom, we have to ask more questions. We have to really dig deep and ask more questions and work on, your, on, on our responses. That's pretty much about it. And you know, Tim, if I can just one thing that I have learned by this experience, because you always learn, you're like, you don't have it, you know, this is like a new thing. Um, because I'm actually I'm a real fan of Zoom. And uh but I I haven't done it with my clients, but because of this experience, I would I would be more uh I would be very encouraging to my clients to get on a Zoom call with me because then I can not only hear them, I can see them. Like a lot of our stuff was text messaging and emailing and phone calling, but it's like if to, I get on a Zoom call, you know, and even in hindsight, as I was listening to you talk, when, cause I just got the offer on Thursday night, you know, I'm a, I mean, I know everybody, like I know it's easier. It's just so much easier before COVID-19 to send something via DocuSign. I get that, right? But, you know, and that's one, it's, that's easy when we're in a multiple offer situation, but if we're in a back and forth situation, a little bit old school, all right, it's like, I, you know, if I, if I, in thinking of it, if I would have had a Zoom call with them and presented the offer on Zoom, I may have figured it out a little bit better. There's a couple of things I could have done differently, but you don't know what you don't know. It's a learning curve. Right. Yeah. So I, I would highly recommend doing that on, um, it, on an offer, on an offer night. And again, I, I am seeing more home inspectors uh, now starting to uh, interact. You know, I'm getting more uh, people requesting home inspectors and more home inspectors now starting to work in this new environment. You know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a, sense of, a different sense of positivity that's going on out there. Uh, I do not believe that the registry is going to close. We've passed that fear, right? I remember all of that. See, it's extremely important that we tap in, like we remember all of that fear. And remember that fear is the most incompetent teacher that exists because all this, most of the stuff that we, we were worried about uh, five weeks ago hasn't happened. Like, has not happened. The only thing that's happened is, unfortunately, there's been more deaths, right? Unfortunately, there's been more spread. Uh, and unfortunately, we've had a lot more um, um, uh, sales that have gone, like less sales and less showings. Um, all those things happened. But now where are we? Now we're no longer, we're no longer there. Now we're talking about a whole different uh, environment altogether. There's more positivity than ever before. Okay, so with that, is there anything else you guys want to share with me? I want to. I, I do want to say that um, um, the clauses that we have right now um, are for our Schedule Bs are the right clauses to have. Uh, there's no termination of a of a contract. It just extends it if something happened. Um, we don't need to pull anything out. Uh, of our schedule B at this time. I think we should remain the course that we're on right now. And uh, once these kits are available, um, we will be provide, we'll be doing a, I'm going to do a video and, and just uh, share with everybody, but I am getting a lot of emails on my phone uh, of people who want them and that's great. And I promise to get back to you as soon as I get my hands on them. All righty. Everybody have a wonderful day. 
and uh, here for you if ever needed. Talk to you soon. Thank you.